Hello there guys and welcome to week six of our Our Reason for Hope teaching series. The series where I'm going through and basically every week I'm giving you a reason why the Christian faith gives us hope, why relationship with God gives us hope for our today, for our past, for our present, for our future. Um, and we're at week six. This week I'm going to be interviewing Simon about our topic today. And that topic is the fact that God doesn't demand performance or perfection. Now, before I jump into this teaching, uh, I do just want to explain the point that um, about, about this whole reason, God's demand for perfection or performance. Because at his heart, God is a perfect God. And to know him and to, to be known by him, we must be perfect, holy, unblemished, pure beings that can come and actually be in his presence. God cannot be around sin. And in fact, as Christians, we are called to live righteous lives, righteous and holy lives. In fact, in his Sermon to the Mount, which is is the, um, the passage in Matthew where Jesus is talking to his uh, followers, uh, the, the people who listen and believe in him, and he's doing it on the side of the Mount of Olives, uh, he says to them, be holy as God is holy. And so then really the question is, well, hold on, if Jesus says that, what, what do I mean by the fact that God doesn't demand performance or perfection? Well, Romans uh, 3.23, a book in the Bible, that the Apostle Paul writes to uh, the, the, the Roman people. If you don't want to know more about that, check out our Sunday services as we've been going through Romans at the moment. Romans 3.23 says this, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. So what does that passage mean? Well, basically it means that Jesus came to perfectly fulfill on our behalf God's demand for perfection. God still demands perfection. But because we are a broken, messed up people, we all make mistakes, we all sin. God made a way that the demand for perfection would not fall on us, but it fell on his son and Jesus perfectly fulfills it. And in fact, because of what Jesus did, God now sees us, me and you, if you've received Jesus, as perfect and righteous. Jesus has literally purchased perfection and righteous for you and he has given it to you and it means we don't become perfect we're not perfect people I'm not able to attain perfection but instead when God sees me and when God sees you he sees us as perfect because he sees the perfection that Jesus has earned when he sees us so what does that mean well when we receive Jesus by faith you can't earn it it's purely by saying Jesus I believe in you it frees it frees us from the need to earn his or anyone else's approval through perfection. So when you become a Christian, you can have hope and we can have such great hope. Why? Because I don't have to earn your perfection. I don't have to earn anyone else's perfection. I'll speak a little bit about the, the areas and the people that demand perfection from us uh, in the interview with Simon. But but Jesus says we, we don't need to do that. We don't need to earn anyone's approval. We don't even need to earn God's approval because Jesus has already earned it for us and he gives it to us freely. It is the most amazing message of joy and grace and mercy and love to pour out something that we never deserved and give it to us freely. So the only perfection, as I've said, is that required that is required from God is the perfection that Jesus has already earned. And you know what? He gives it to us freely when we accept him as our Lord and Saviour. He doesn't say, OK, you've accepted me. Now you've got to earn and, and go through these steps and tick these boxes. Because Christianity has, has, has given that message for so long. But I need to tell you, it is not right. Jesus looks at you. He gives you the gift of perfection freely. And it means God can look at you and say, you are perfect because my son gave his perfection to you. And because of all this, guys, we have even more hope because that means we can live freely. We get to live with the great hope that all that God desires is fulfilled and purchased in Jesus, not in you, not in what you can do, not in the words you say, the things you think. We can have hope that everything is fulfilled by Jesus. And so that's why in so many places the Bible speaks of us having a life free of the pressures and the burdens of earning perfection. You know, there's so many ways that we can feel like, oh man, I just need to earn, I just have to 
do this right and say these words and get everything right and then maybe God will love me. But no, Matthew 11 says this. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. If that's you, this verse is speaking to you. Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, not the yoke of an egg. The yoke was an instrument which held two oxen together as they pulled the plow. Uh, a young oxen would be matched with an older oxen. The older oxen would be doing most of the work, but it would guide the younger oxen. And that's what Jesus is saying. Let me be the older oxen that does most of the work. that just guides you and pulls you along. He says this, verse 29, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Guys, we can have such incredible hope that God gives us perfection. He sees the perfection of Jesus on us. And because of that, he says, you don't have to stress and strain under the weight of the world or expectation, but you can live a life free with Jesus guiding you and taking the weight of all those burdens on his shoulders. So guys, let's jump into the interview with Simon and I'll see you in a few minutes. Hello, Simon. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? You okay? Not too bad, thank you. Yeah, decent. Enjoying the, the nice weather this week, so it makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? Makes lockdown a bit, a little bit easier. Yeah, a little bit easier. It's been nice. Um, well, as you know, we're doing this um, Our Reason for Hope series, and uh, basically this week, as you know, we've been looking at the idea that God doesn't demand perfection mm. or, or performance from us. Um, yeah. You know, I've shared a little bit about that. Um, I'm just really interested to hear for you if that's true or not. You know, for me, I, I'm so aware that we have faced so many pressures from so many places, whether it's your parents or your in-laws if you're married or, you know, your bosses at work or your colleagues around you or even sports managers. I know we, we share, share that pressure. Uh, spouses and friends, every single person has this expectation of how you should act. And then after all of that, we get to the end of a week, we often get to a Sunday, we walk into a church and we feel the pressure that God doesn't just want us to be good, he wants us to be perfect. But as I've shared a little bit already in the teaching, that's not true. He actually doesn't want that from us. So why yeah. don't you share a little bit of your experience about actually what God does want and the fact that it gives you hope that he doesn't want performance or perfection from you. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, that's de it's definitely been something that I've been on a journey to, to realise. I think it's because of, for me, I think culture is so opposite to that it's sort of you work hard yeah. you know if you try hard enough if you strive and work hard enough you can be whatever you know you can do whatever you want based on our own performance so in jobs and in life like you said sports coaching whatever it may be i think that pressure is just always on us yeah when you become a christian and i think god's had to take me through a journey of stripping it away mm. uh, and i think i realized or God told me really that I had a performance oriented mindset with my relationship with God. So more like, mm. like I was a slave or a worker for God rather than his son. So I think it's more slavery than sonship. And I think God's taken me on a, on a massive journey for me. And that's where, you know, Matthew 11, 28, 30 has been massive for me that Jesus says he will take all the heavy load, you know, as if we're working together on this earth, we're in the field of the oxen, you know, and God says, I'll do all the heavy lifting. And for me, that took all the pressure off to to set a certain standard to be perfect and that performance oriented. Because I think subconsciously, I had that mindset of, you know, the more I pray, the more we, I work in a church now, the more church work, or I read my Bible more. And that somehow made God love me more or made God love me less or I deserved this, you know, I deserved the <laughs> heaven more. I don't know what it is or his love or... Um, and for me that's been a massive shift in mindset that that's the hope that we have is you know it says in I was reading it this morning 2 Timothy 3 13 you know if we are faithless he remains faithful for he cannot deny who he is yeah. so you know he can't deny himself he is love you know he's patient he's faithful he's forgiving so for me that hope is when I fall short or when I perhaps find myself back on that the hamster wheel of performance that actually the hope is that God's forgiveness is there his mercy's there, his love's there. He doesn't love me anymore. He doesn't love me any less based on what I've done. Um, yeah, so I think it's a, for me, it's been a shift from performance oriented to, to sonship and I'm adopted as his son and he loves me. You know, for who I am, not what I do. Yeah, so, that, you know, that's, for me, that's been a shift for me. That's awesome, man. I like, I love that, you know, A, that it's, 
it's everyone, every person experiences this. You're not like the, the only person in the world who feels pressure to perform, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, church or religion or faith or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, and I, I will just say that that's not, you know, for, for years and as, as a leader of a church, we apologize for the times that you felt pressured in church because that's not what it's about. But I'm really interested about that sort of not being a slave, but being a son. And I think that we can so often fall into that wrong mindset so daily maybe in your daily practices what does yeah. being a son of god not a slave of god look like in how you respond or even how you respond to when you fall short because that's where we can have hope in those moments yeah i think it's not being too uh harsh on myself maybe if i don't do the things that i think i should or maybe i haven't acted in the way that i thought god would want me to or is it's christian or it's loving um, and I think it's having that mindset of God as a loving father. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't put that pressure on you to do that. He's not. He doesn't have these really high expectations of us, and we're constantly having to go back and go, "I'm oh, sorry, God." You know, he's this annoyed father that's like, "Oh, that was so." Annoying. You know, I think it's that mindset. Yeah. For me, day to day, it's also being able to just spend time with God, like for no reason, yeah. not to do something because, for me, that helps me try and get off that or go against culture and just say, right, I'm going to sit, I'm going to enjoy this relationship with God without the expectation and the the striving of just doing more for him. Yeah. You know, because I think that does lead to burnout and that leads to us striving and we always fall short. As you know, we, it's only God that makes us righteous. You know, he has made us freely in his sight, as the Roman, you know, as the verses said, it's not what we do, it's what he's done. Yeah. And I think yeah. trying to, remind myself of that each day it helps me take the yeah, the focus off myself it's not about me and onto him and you know that takes the, the weight off my shoulders I think of performance and perfection and actually being real and vulnerable and that helps us you know if you know who you are you know you're a son you know you're loved no matter what for me that allows me to um, live in a way that's not as maybe insecure as it was or always striving I, I was getting burnt out and working cause trying to prove something maybe to myself to Jesus to everyone to you anyone whoever it may be yeah. to prove that I was worth love or that I was worthy to be in this job all those types of things so yeah I think it's just taking that burden off isn't it and yeah so daily reminders that it's not about performance is yeah. probably what helps me just getting off that wheel mate that's that's awesome and, and you know I love that 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 idea that when we are in the wrong place, we're in the wrong mindset that God um, wants something of us, then it actually tells us that to that that we can attain it. The very fact that, oh, God wants you to work has this sort of message of, oh, and, and you you need to attain perfection. And therefore, when you don't attain it, you feel guilty. And it's just this, like you yeah. said, this hamster wheel of cycle of going, oh, maybe I could make it. Oh, no, I failed again. Maybe I could, no, I failed again. And it's like, no, God actually, he wants you off the hamster wheel. He wants you... In whatever is outside a hamster wheel, I don't know. I've never had a hamster. Hey, no. no idea that the luscious hay that you put around a <laughs> hamster wheel. I don't know, but you know, and, and it is that. And I, I absolutely love that. Simon, thank you so much for breaking that down. It, it hasn't been a long time, but it's been a great time. And you know, that is the heart of the gospel. That you know, God doesn't demand uh, a lifestyle of of of. of trying and striving and trying to work hard and proving that you in any way deserve love the reality the bible tells us we don't deserve it but he gives it freely because it's who he is so simon thank you so much for today mate it's my pleasure no worries i'll see you soon see you soon mate so there we are guys that was the interview with simon what a fantastic time just discussing the idea that we are sons or daughters not slaves that we are loved by god because of who he is and ultimately that is the reason why God's demand for perfection is fulfilled in Jesus gives us hope. Mm -hmm.